Woo! We're back off of a holiday weekend. The Christmas weekend did not treat my fantasy football teams all that kind. <laughs> and then going into Christmas Monday, we were treated to a stinker. So I don't know what I did in the year to get just lump of coal after lump of coal this holiday season. But, uh, you know, rent was due, I guess, on, on Christmas. Yeah. I don't know. I've, I don't know. I, I know you got some L's out your way, too. <laughs> Yes, yes. Unfortunately, I lost the toilet bowl. Uh, needed Brock Purdy to give me 18 points. He's my last player, last player in the whole game. I needed 18 points to win the toilet bowl. I lose the toilet bowl because he throws four interceptions. And now I will have a lemonade stand some at some point this summer, selling lemonade and raising money. Lemonade here. Draft. Get your <laughs> yeah. lemonade here. Yeah, so you'll catch me out there. I'll be sure to let everybody know that follows the show so you guys can come out and get some lemonade. <laughs> oh, God, that's going to be so good. We'll have to put, the, <laughs> put a live stream or something on IG for that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, adios one seed. We're not, uh, we're mathematically eliminated from that thanks to Christmas Day. Uh, we'll talk more yeah. about the Raiders here in a little bit. But first, let's jump into some hot off the press Kansas City Chiefs news, starting with uh, wide receiver one for the Cincinnati Bengals. He just, uh, you put that camera in front of him, you give him a microphone in the locker room where he's safe. Uh, from the field, nursing an injury. We don't know if he's going to play, but uh, you know his his mouth and his jaw. That's not what's on the injury report. So that's going to be running regardless. Um, he decides yeah, yeah. to to call out the defense. We saw a similar comment, right? Uh, nothing about our defense impresses him. Legarius Sneed, just another guy. No superstars on our defense, just kind of compounding the insults one after another. And the reporter even asks him, you know, aren't you worried about bulletin board material? And he's like, I hope they do put it in their locker. And it's like, I just don't know. I don't know what his motive is. You know, obviously he's trying to get under, get under their skin a little bit. Obviously he's a little butt hurt that he got uh, sent to Cancun a little bit early last year. Um, but, you know, from this to the comments last year to the tune in a can comment about Justin Reed, this guy's got a vendetta against the Kansas City Chiefs. And obviously it's one of the yeah. bigger rivalries in sports right now. But what are your thoughts here, man? Yeah, I mean, this guy's like the neighbor's dog. You know, he just keeps barking. You can't get him to shut up. But I mean, it, it's been <laughs> consistent for, you know, it seems like two years now since we really got this you know rivalry going on with, with the Bengals now. So. Um, I, I'm I'm a player for it. We know that Jerry Sneed, if he plays, is going to be following around Jamar Chase. So I love that matchup for Jerry Sneed after what he's done so far this season on other number ones, uh, guys that are clear cut better than Jamar Chase. So I, I love the matchup. And, and Jerry Sneed is a guy who comes out and he's a dog, right? He he does get a little over emotional and, and had a couple plays so far this year where he uh, you know had some penalties where he shouldn't have had penalties. Or he was a little over emotional, but I'll gladly take, you know, two holding calls and a pass interference or pass interference and a holding call for him to shut Jamar Chase down to one or two catches for 20 yards. And I fully expect if Jerry Sneed plays, that's what we will see out of him. And so bring on the Baltimore uh, material. I I'm not worried about that at all. I just hope that the offense could kind of take some of that energy as well and say, hey, man, look, this guy's talking all this shit. Let's turn this into something and really shut this guy up. So that's what I'm looking for, man. I mean, he obviously, you know, we haven't held him to that stat line yet. You said 20 yards, something or other. He's He's been able to put up decent yardage against us every time we played him, right? Obviously, he had his big breakout rookie year game against us, almost 300 yards, like 266 and three touchdowns. But all in all, he's got 492 yards and four touchdowns in four total games. So the next three games, I mean, really, you know, for Jamar Chase's standards, kind of pedestrian numbers. I mean, 54 in a touchdown, that's really good in the AFC Championship game. 
he had like 75 and eight catches, six catches, something like that last year. Um, so we haven't really held him to anything, you know, below his typical standard, but he really hasn't blown up like he did in that first game since. So, yeah, you know, we, we know how to, we know how to subdue him. So where he's not like totally altering the game and yeah. with him having an injury, you know, that's, that's my only thing with it is like the dude might not even see the field and he's just running his mouth and John, you know, if you were planning on playing, if you were going to be coming in, like that's one thing totally different, but I don't know. You got to talk. You got to say something to me. He's just another guy talking in front of a camera in a Cincinnati locker room. All those guys are yeah. always chattering and, you know, get get yeah. uh, I hate to say scoreboard because they definitely have us beat in the head to head win percentage, but they just don't have the the accolades after those wins to back it up. So right. I don't know. Yep. They uh, yeah, exactly what you said. Neighbor's little dog chirping. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And and I, I kind of want to. You know, I, I'm not too worried. I, I'm, I'm worried about this game with with how, you know, things have gone for the Chiefs on offense. But, um, you know, and we could talk about that here in a bit. I, I you know, I want to address the Raiders game first. And um, but I don't think I, I, I'm taking Jerry Snead's performance of what he's done so far this year over what Jamar Chase has done to us over a couple of years. So I think Jerry's been a little more consistent and I, I like the win there, but yeah, um, to, to jump into the Raiders game here, Dan, you know, what, and what we saw on Christmas day was, you know, pretty bad and, and, you know, pretty bad, you know, saying it pretty lightly at this point. So, um, but before we get into it, uh, I want to bring this in with better homes and gardens, specifically my wife, Katie Lawrence, who is a real estate with better homes and garden and is serving the Kansas city Metro area. She's making things happen for you. If you're looking to buy, sell, or build a home, she's going to take care of all that dirty work in the background so that you and your family, if that's the case, can sit down, kind of pick out the perfect house for yourself and not have to worry about all that paperwork, all the legal stuff, you know, whatever it may be. She's going to take care of all that for you. So um, be sure to get a hold of Katie. Her number is 816-868-1920, and she'll be able to take care of all that for you. She's looking forward to it. But, um, Dan, you know, we saw – the same old song and dance with, with the presser after the game, right? The, mm. the, Hey, we got some things to fix and uh, you know, it's my fault and we're going to figure out a way. And if we can just figure this out, then nobody can beat us. Right. And, and really the fans have been saying the same shit all season too, where like, right. man, the, the only team that can beat the chiefs is the chiefs at this point, but they haven't figured that out. Right. They just continuously beat themselves. And at this point it's, it's kind of like, you know, what is the change? Is something going to change this season or are we just going to continue to say the same shit at the presser after we have an awful game or or is there going to be action? You know, I, I think that's the question that right. the Chiefs fans are asking at this point. Well, it's like, you know, exactly what you said. We got to clean up this and that, like these small things. And they are. They are small things. I totally agree. Um, you know, it's drop passes. Like that's fundamental stuff that should be able to get – tidied up fairly quickly the the penalties the false starts the presser today with matt Nagy. i mean we got more of the same right where it's you know yeah i know i've said this before we have we've all said this we're trying to hold ourselves accountable i know these guys are working and we're going to clean it up well now it's week 17 the record's been skipping over and over and over again and what are we seeing we're still seeing distrust between mahomes and the wide receivers there were several plays where those guys would get open where he just wouldn't trust them to get the ball there. Or if they are open, they're totally on a different communication path where receiver does one thing. Mahomes is throwing the ball to play for another. Mahomes honestly hasn't thrown well over the last couple yeah, of weeks. Right. I don't yeah. I don't know what his situation is, but he's under throwing guys left and right or overthrowing them by a mile um, on those deep yeah. plays. Outside yeah, of that play to Richie James, it was check down city. And yeah. I mean, and, and even just looking at the play calling too, a lot of our plays start behind the line of scrimmage. Even yeah. if we're already backed up, there was a situation where we, we were on third and long and we decide to throw the ball five yards behind the line of scrimmage. 
Next thing you know, first contact's made a yard back from the line of scrimmage, and we're fighting to get back to the line. It's just like yeah. plays like that over and over and over again, compounding and putting us in these tough situations. I mean, even the two turnovers, just back-to-back -back turnovers that resulted in points. Our defense allowed six points in that game. Yeah, They didn't complete a pass for three straight quarters. I mean, it's That's just unheard incredible. of things unheard of things that that need to yeah. get tidied up because we're we're not wasting what you always hear is you're wasting a year of so-and-so player we're wasting a prime defense right now that's that that's a great point yeah where the conversation has been revolved around patrick mahomes we're wasting patrick mahomes prime time right but we're wasting a deep a super bowl defense at this point and yeah i had a good conversation with somebody at work who um, was or is a Bears fan, and he had Matt Nagy for the last couple of years, right? Or, you know, several years ago, and where they had a top five defense. And he was like, I was saying the same exact shit back when the Bears had a top five defense, and we had Matt, uh, Matt Nagy uh, calling the plays on offense, and our, our defense was just getting wasted because our offense couldn't produce. Right. You know, how do you allow six points and not win the football game? You know, obviously the score was higher than that, 20 to 14. Uh, the Raiders take the win. But, you know, without the the turnovers on offense, six points. And like you said, they didn't complete a pass in the last three quarters. If you if I tell you those stats and you didn't know the game, you didn't know the score of the game or anything about the game, I told you those stats, 99.9% .9 of the time you'd say there's no way they lost. Yeah. But they figured out a way. To lose the football game in right. fashion that we haven't seen, I've never seen before as a Chiefs fan, that's for sure. You know, yeah. too many opportunities after those mistakes to make it up and beat a team with a Vegas, a Vegas team who's not good. They're just kind of hot right now. They have a new energy because they got a new head coach. They're not good. Right. They're really not. And so I think that's part of the frustration. But, you know, uh, run us through the injury report that we're seeing, you know, progress through the week here and what we can look forward to in the in the Bengals game yeah I mean you saw it in in the Raiders game right we couldn't get the run game going part of that's because Pacheco went down with that concussion helmet comes off his helmet comes off every play they need to like downside yeah. that freaking thing or something because it's now it's getting to a point where we're losing a guy because it comes yeah. off he hits that knee um still dealing with concussion there Donovan Smith dealing with his stinger uh neck neck issues all year Kadarius Tony's got the hip still. Uh, we got Jalen Watson, who I, I thought played a really solid game on Sunday. Had a couple decent plays in coverage, and he's dealing with a, an illness of some sort. All of them are not practicing at this point. Pacheco probably, I would be surprised if he clears concussion protocol, but we might be a little shorthanded. The biggest, you know, hindrance on our team right now is not having Snead potentially in that game against Jamar Chase or yep. T Higgins, whoever their number one ends up being uh, for that game. So that's definitely something to look at, man. I just really hope like going into this Bengals game and we can talk about it a little bit more here in a second when we really dive into the offense and defense, but man, we just need to like continue to get, and I don't want to, I don't want to like talk about, the defense a ton because they did phenomenal right they got plenty of pressure on Aiden O'Connell they didn't allow a completion all that good stuff the run D could have been a little bit better we are going to face a pretty viable rushing attack with Chase Brown and with Joe Mixon in this game and based on what the Bengals put out on the field last week against the Steelers you know Jake Browning got kind of shut down from a pressure perspective, the Pittsburgh Steelers were all over them. So I could see them maybe shifting the game plan a little bit to get their running game going against us, especially with what we put on tape last week. But the offensive stuff is really where we got to clean it up, man. We got to figure out a way to get the run game going. Um, with, with Pacheco having his concussion, Clyde Edwards, Alaire is maybe dealing with a little bit of an injury as well. I yeah. mean, who did that leave for us? I think LaMichael P. Ryan kind of falls in obviously McKinnon hit the IR as well recently. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of running game things that we're going to need to pick up if we want our passing game to go, because that stuff always goes hand in hand. So yeah. figuring that out, getting the freaking penalties cleaned up, getting our offensive line in a place where we can block Wanya Morris got kind of dogged a little bit here and there. I mean, they're putting Max Crosby on him. 
But yeah. he's not going to draw mu- a much easier assignment this week with Trey Hendrickson. So getting the O-line figured out so the pocket's not collapsing, get, getting Mahomes confident, getting these freaking receivers confident is huge for, for us going into this game. So that's the stuff that I think we need to get cleaned up as we kind of go in. But, I mean, we can talk Bengals now because as far as I'm concerned, Raiders game's in the rear view. The yeah. one seed's in the rear view. Forget about that. Let's focus on getting the freaking division title locked up and getting our yep. ticket punch for the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. I, I got one last point I want to make for the offense, and it's really something I, I just noticed this week. It's not something I've noticed has progressed over the over the season. And that when the old lines when the old line plays well, they're great. When they have tough games, they are one of the worst in the league. And it's it's interesting to watch them progress through a game because when they're bad, they are bad. And it's they're lining up, they're not jumping off the ball. They're, they're missing assignments. Like, it's super weird how the offensive line is so disorganized. So I'd, I'd like to see, you know, and I, I don't know what the structure is to the Chiefs offense and how O-line's integrated, who really manages the O-line. But I think that's something to watch throughout the se- the rest of the season as well. And that was kind of frustrating to me after watching, you know, Pat Mahomes run and throughout the whole backfield trying to get away from pressure. But uh, yeah, a really, really poor game from the offensive line, who's had a really pretty solid year. So a very interesting you know, thought I had there while I was watching the game. But, yeah, I think we jump into the Bengals game here. We move on. You know, look here, we're, we're sitting on Thursday night. You guys are going to hear this Friday morning. So I, I it's time to move on. Uh, New Year's Eve game here with the Bengals. You play at 325 at Arrowhead. So it's going to be a nice midday game. Hopefully the mm-hmm. weather shapes up nice for us, but uh, implications of the game here, man, they're, they're pretty big for both teams and really bigger for the Bengals at this point because they're, they're trying to get into the dance. So if the Bengals could get a win this weekend against the Chiefs and a Houston loss and an Indianapolis loss, they're back in the dance. Obviously, if they get a win and, and get one of those losses and maybe some help next week with another win next week, they'll have a pretty good shot of getting in, but as it stands for this weekend, again, they have to win with the Houston loss and Indianapolis loss, and they'll be back in that seventh spot. For the Chiefs, though, we're looking to lock up the division. This has got to be mission number one is to lock up the division. I feel like that's something we forgot throughout the season. It was solely focused on the one seed, and now we're looking, you know, the last few weeks has been like, holy shit, are we going to get the division? Are the Broncos going to show up and maybe take it from us? And now the conversation after last week, has been, well, the Raiders have a chance now, too. If the Chiefs lose out and they win out, they can take it from us. So um, a lot of things got to be going on. We have to focus on the priorities of what the, Chief, the Chiefs need right now. And that's the one – or that's the – to lock up the division, you know, wherever we lay, whether it's the three or the four seed, you know, it doesn't matter at this point. We just need to be able to lock up the division and move on. So we can do that this weekend. Uh, maintain the grip on the th- on three seed as well. You know, obviously Jacksonville has had their struggles as well the last four or five weeks. Um, and then you know try to make a run here at the two seed. Miami would have to lose this weekend and next weekend for us to get a tie if we won the rest of the season. But uh, there is that opportunity still laying out there for that two seed. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I just want us to punch the playoff ticket. There's a very yeah. real possibility that our playoff road involves Miami, Baltimore, and Buffalo. I mean, regardless of where we end up finishing, whether it's the two seed, the three seed, whatever. Yeah. Obviously, you know, you want the two seed because of the potential for the Ravens to lose or in the divisional round of the playoffs to a team like Buffalo. Like if Buffalo ends up with a seven seed and the Chiefs have the three seed, like they're going to Baltimore to play the Ravens. And in that instance, they would come to Kansas City for an AFC championship game. So, you know, in a a two seed scenario, that's kind of like the only real benefit. Other than that, man, it's like we're going to see some combination of these teams and, you know, with a three seed, we're at least hosting two of those games. And I think, you know, if we and that's this is all hypothetical that we even can make our way out of the divisional round, we would play that road AFC championship game. Um, But with the way things have gone, man, my my confidence going into the playoffs is not super high on this team. Even Uh, high at all. Yeah, I mean, not not really at all, uh, to tell you the truth. So I mean, those are like the scenarios that we can look at with this Bengals game. With the Bengals, they definitely have a lot more 
um, at stake here. Like they're they're relying on so many other teams to do things, even if they control their fate throughout the rest of the playoffs. Like they need some of these other teams to lose some games like Houston, like Indy, like Pittsburgh. Um, All of those scenarios are kind of in the air for them. So, you know, honestly, they have a lot more to play for than us because their whole playoff life depends on it. And with the recent news about the Broncos benching Russell Wilson, starting, starting Jared Siddham, like if they lose this week, the division's locked up for Kansas city win or lose. Cause we'll go into that final week with a one game lead and, you know, we're going to play, but if they end up, if we both lose by some chance, we'll have the better, um, tiebreaker for AFC for the AFC West and for the AFC as a whole. So those are all scenarios that are, I mean, just kind of minimize the Broncos chances of getting, getting that going. But yeah, I mean, for, for playoff implications, there are a lot, a lot more riding on it for the Bengals. I think for us, just because I don't think there's a huge difference between our road with a two or a three seed. Yeah. Agreed. I agree with that for sure. Now, talking about how we win, first I want to give a quick shout out to E Coffee, www.eerosecoffee. Um, those guys are KC local. They got me through the holidays with some espresso tray. I need to get you a couple of bags. I just got a little stockpile sitting over here. But uh, make sure you check them out, www.eerosecoffee.com. And go grab yourself some KC local coffee. Um Talking about how we win, it's getting that O-line right, right? It starts in the trenches. Probably not going to have Donovan Smith again. That neck, anytime you're dealing with a neck or a back, it just connects to so many other things. His power is being affected. He can't turn his body right. Like, those are all things that are all connected in that, in your spinal area. So, like, <clears throat> they're just going to take their time with him at the end of the day. So we're going to need Wanya Morris to grow up a little bit faster in that scenario. Um, just to use an analogy, um, cause I'm sure he's a mature player and all that stuff, but he's just going to need to, to understand, you know, we're in the NFL. Now these guys are going to be yep. bigger and faster. We got to be disciplined in all phases and make sure that, you know, we're not getting beat the way that he got beat last week. Um, really just in the trenches not it's beyond just like executing it's just being disciplined too we had false starts we had offsides like those were penalties that were called in our game last week that have continued to plague us specifically with Juwan Taylor man i've been pretty i've been pretty you know low key on him like i understand it's his first year in the system but it's not his first year in the league okay like yeah Clean the shit up. It's done. The flags are done. You know how they're officiating you. You know how they're calling the game on you. At this point, you've been with the team since March. Okay? We're coming up on one full year knowing the Andy Reid system and everything with the offense and the cadences. Like, the one-off things are fine. But you've done it consistently Every game yeah. we're getting a you know false start on number seventy four or whatever the case is. I'm just sick of seeing this and then them holding up a seventy four for the flag. It yeah. needs to get cleaned up. And so, yeah, execution and discipline are huge for our trenches this week on the offensive side of the ball. If Andy Heck is not keying in on those things for the offensive line, which I'm sure he is, or if Matt Nagy's not making that a big initiative for them, then we're going to be in some trouble facing that defensive line, even without DJ Reader. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I think what I'm looking for out of this offensive line is really gel together and be able to, you know, cut those small mistakes up, you know, like you said, with the penalties and, and and small mistakes like that. Like, I'm looking for, like, actually execution mistakes that we've been making. Why are we not coming off the blocks off the double team correctly? Or why are we missing gaps? And why is Patrick Mahomes running everywhere? Or why are we missing our run blocks down the field? Or why is Pacheco always eating a tackle behind the, the line of scrimmage, right? So why are we dealing with that right now where the last five weeks before the Raiders game, we weren't dealing with that, where our offensive line was dominating. It was really just what was, what was going on in the past game. And 
Pacheco, before he went out, he was dominating the the, the run game, and and the line's a huge part of that, obviously. So uh, those guys have to, you know, change whatever whatever happened last week. That shit's got to change over and go back right. to the style of football we were playing before that. So you know that goes right into another point of you know trusting in the guy that plays next to you, and for. Pat, that's receivers. And for, you know, Joe Tooney, that's Creed Humphrey. And for MVS, that's Rasheed Rice. And whatever the scenario is in the field, got to trust the guy next to you that he's going to make a play for you and make a play for the guy next to him. And we have to, you know, gel this football team back together. And honestly, maybe it's too late. You know, maybe it's too late for the Chiefs to make these moves where they're, they're, they're finally going to trust each other or whatever the story may be. But I, I think you have to at least believe in it that you have an opportunity here. You are going to go to the playoffs, punch your ticket, and then make a run, right? The, the the Giants team that we saw that got the wild card and went and won the Super Bowl, right? I mean, it, it is right. it's possible. It is possible. Um, just got to trust the guy next to you. But um, another point I want to make here, and really this goes into two of my points here that, that are a key for the Chiefs to win. And one is field position. Obviously, this offense cannot produce over 50 yards of drive whether it's penalties, turnovers, turnover on down, third and longs, you know, whatever the story is, we cannot produce over 50 yards. And our, our drives all halt short of 50 yards. Field position is going to be so key that we need the offense to start on the other side of the, on the other side of the 50. And how hard is that to do? It's extremely hard to do, right? Yeah. You're asking the defense to turn the ball over from the offense every time they get the ball on the other side of the 50. That's what you're asking. Or you're asking for some kind of special teams miracle, which is, you know, two percent chance it happens on every special teams play, right? So, yeah, I, I think we're already. I'm here. I am again asking the defense to do more than what they've already done, right? And they've already established themselves as a top three defense in the league. And here I am again, like I said, asking them to do more. <laughs> I need more turnovers out of the defense because our offense can't supplement their side of the football. So we have to make it up on another aspect of the game, and that's got to be defense. So defense has got to dominate the turnover game. We have to create those third and longs. We have to make them punt within their own 20 so that we can at least try to get the ball at like the 30 or the 40 and, and try to make something happen from there. But field position and turnovers from the defense is going to be crucial for the Chiefs to be able to right. make a run at beating the Bengals this weekend. Well, we always talk about, you know, what's the bottom line? in a loss what's the difference between the team winning and the team losing and most of the times you can point to one of two things right which team was most disciplined with penalties and giving away free yardage to the other team and which team won the turnover battle and that's a hundred percent something that we have not done and it's honestly like this is the one place where you can fault the defense because they've only generated five turnovers in the last eight games but the offense is just as much at fault because they've given up the ball three times more than that. 15 yeah. turnovers in eight games is unacceptable. That's almost two turnovers a game, right? We haven't yeah. had a game with Mahomes not throwing an interception since October. I think it was 70 degrees yeah. at that time. <laughs> like we're freezing our ass off now. It's yeah. that, that time's over. Yeah. So just like getting getting us in a situation where both of these units can work together. I don't know if there's any Royals fans out there or if you pay attention too much, but that's that's the problem with that team there, right? They can always get the bat going for one game or the pitching going for one game, but they can never join the thing together, and that's why they lose 100 games. That's why we're seeing <laughs> the Chiefs have these problems is because the defense is balling out, but the offense doesn't connect. And then there's another drive yeah. where the offense stalls out and then the defense lets up some points here and there, whether it be a field goal, touchdown, whatever. And we're just not stringing these things together, getting consistent, consistent wins. Um, yeah. And that's, that's honestly been the problem. And, you know, with, with our turnover ratio, Andy Reid's teams are not traditionally turnover heavy. Like or that's penalized. the one thing that we've always been able to rely on is that we're not going to give the ball up a ton on offense, right? We've had our fair yeah. share of special teams turnovers over the over the last couple of years because guys can't catch the damn ball on a punt. But <clears throat> with with Patrick Mahomes, he's a relatively safe quarterback. Doesn't throw it. To, he he set a career high in interceptions. So 
tying those two things together so we can finally get a W in the turnover battle is going to be a big piece to this game. If we end up on the losing end of that scoreboard, I bet you can trace it to one or both of those things I just said. We gave up too many free yards on penalties or we didn't win the damn turnover battle. Yeah, yeah. No, well said. And I, I guarantee if you went to the losses we've had so far this year, you could at least I, – I guarantee we lost a turnover better on all six games. Guarantee it. Yeah. I mean, yep. I'd be surprised. I would be shocked. I'll fall out of my chair right now if you pull up a stat that tells <laughs> me we didn't – we won a turnover battle in one of those games we lost. <clears throat> or a penalty stack, right? And I'm not yeah, saying it's yeah. the refs. They didn't call this or that. It's the Chiefs being undisciplined at this point. Like, yeah, yeah, being one of the no, top – right. Being one of the top penalized teams in the league, you got to understand that they're you're under a freaking microscope, and everything you do is going to get called. Like that's why our offensive line is getting called so much. That's why we had another penalty for a wide receiver lined up in the freaking neutral zone. Like th that's that's the problem. It's like we're not learning from these mistakes. We're coming into the yeah. next week thinking it's not going to happen again, and you know yeah, here we point. are with the short end of the stick at the end of the game. Good point. Good point. Yeah. So, I mean, looking at how the Broncos or the Broncos, here we go, man. I got the Broncos living rent free in my head. Here we go. <laughs> the Bengals, you know, uh, how they can win the game. And, and I don't like talking about, I, I honestly, I don't like talking about this aspect, but it's good content here. I, I like uh, getting the feedback from the fans, but how the Bengals can win the game here is forcing those mistakes or just simply letting the chiefs you know, be there and make their own demise with, with the, with the penalties in the, in the turnovers. You know, if there is going to be an opportunity where the chiefs are going to, you know, fumble the ball, the Bengals need to make sure they recover it. Or if they, the chiefs are making or penal are getting penalized, yeah. be sure you're capitalizing on top of those penalties. If it's making it a third and long, make sure you get to the quarterback or make sure Pat throws that, that underneath route or the, the five yard dig. And why we even run a five yard dig on a third and 15, I don't know, but, um, on top of that, I think if the Bengals can get out early, knock the Chiefs on their ass, that's going to give them an opportunity to kind of hold, put their put their foot on our throat because the Chiefs obviously cannot battle adversity from what we've seen so far this year. Outside right. of the Raiders game, when we went down 14-0, we came back and won that game after Thanksgiving. But we at this point, there's not enough juice left in the tank for anybody – once we're down, everybody's just kind of like, ah, well, you know, uh, I might line up offsides here, or I, I might just not <laughs> block this guy on this play, or man, let's I think my ribs drive. hurts. <laughs> yeah, let's let's find a way. Let's find a unique way to kill this drive. You know, I we're, we're just talking shit now, but you know, it's realistic. You know, we've seen no. you know crazy plays. Where we're like, man, wh who's calling this play, or or what's going on with this offense, or what's Patrick thinking here? You know, it, yeah. it's been frustrating to watch. And if the, the Bengals can take advantage of their opportunities, simply just do that, then they're going to have a shot to win this game, unfortunately for yeah. us. I mean, we're literally, I don't know if you've seen Liar Liar, we're literally Jim Carrey in that scene from Liar Liar where he's like beating his own ass in the bathroom to get out of the court. And he can't tell a lie, so he just goes, I'm kicking my own ass. Like, that's literally what we do every single game. The Raiders let us kick our own ass up and down the field on Sunday. And yeah. honestly, that that's why I said what I said a couple shows ago. The only team in the AFC that gives me chills are the Chiefs because we yeah. beat ourselves in all these games. Yeah. I, I just do not think we get outplayed very often, even if, like, as a whole. Like, I know our offense has been getting outplayed quite a bit, comparatively speaking to the other offense, but the defense has been incredible. And just stacking things up, like like you said, if you were to look at the box score only, the stats alone, you would guess the score was totally flipped in that yeah. game against the Raiders, against the Broncos, against, you know, n name the loss. That's yeah, right. the scenario. Yeah. So, I mean, the fact that we... You know, in a boxing match, we get hit on the chin, we fall on the canvas, we do not get up. That gives me pause. I've only seen us do it one time, and that was against the Raiders in Vegas, where we were in that 14-point hole and ended up coming back. 
So that definitely does make me nervous with the Bills, the way that Lou Anaramo coaches that defense. I know he's going to find our Achilles heel and just press his thumb on that thing the entire game, which it's going to be eliminate Kelsey. We know yeah. they're not going to get their run game established. Let them run the ball at will. We'll, we don't need to stack the box on those guys. And, you know, keep she Rice, keep an eye on him the whole time. Let those uh, let him yeah. throw to 11, right? Let him throw to 84. Yeah, yeah. Because those guys aren't really yeah. going to inflict a ton of damage. Yeah. And we got we to gotta prove him wrong, you know? Yeah, at this point, we have, yeah, at this point, we are, we should be, if we're not already, the underdogs. And we should be looked at as the, you know, the ugly stepped, the other uh, ugly uh, stepchild, you know? I almost, you know. Yeah, redhead stepchild or whatever the <laughs> yeah. thing is there. <laughs> it makes it up a little, a little bit step there, head. But... Yeah. <laughs> All right, Dan. Let's look into the AFC landscape here. We're gonna bring this one in with the Alice Saloon. So the Alice Saloon has been, you know, uh, arms wide open to the to the fastest forty here, just for you know, for Dan and I, but also <laughs> all of our fans. Um, they brought us in, had a couple of live shows down there, and they they went great. So they much fun, great man. time. Had some good company come down and watch the show live, so it's been a lot of fun. Um, but the Alice was established back in the 1800s, and it's really got an old school vibe to it. Um, real cool saloon downtown Excelsior Springs. It's got the original bar from from the 1800s, oldest bar this side of the river. Uh, it's some kind of crazy stat like that where it's you know oldest bar, you know this side of the river, or you know in Missouri or third oldest in Missouri or something like that. But um, very cool. Uh, we'll very need cool Keith on here to talk there. about it. Yeah, yeah. Next live show, we'll have them talk about it for sure. So, <laughs> um, go down there. They got ten beers on tap. Keith's been brewing beer down there since 2018. Um, they they focus their efforts on German lagers and German beers in general. And so, like I said, ten beers on tap, man. Keith's really got it going on down there, and it's a good atmosphere. They got events going on throughout the week, Wednesday through Saturday. So make your way down there. Tell them the fastest 40 sent you, but. Uh, Dan, AOC landscape right now, just to run through the standings first, and then we'll talk about some matchups. You know, as the AFC standings sit right now, uh, Baltimore is obviously in that one seat at 12 and three. Miami is sitting in the two at 11 and four. And then followed up by Kansas City and Jacksonville. Kansas City is nine and six, Jacksonville eight and seven. And then the wild card teams right now is Cleveland, Buffalo, Indianapolis. And their records are 10 and five, nine and six, eight and seven. So the outside looking in for, for teams that are looking to get their ticket punch, Houston, Cincy, and Pittsburgh, all eight and seven. And then Vegas uh, brings up the trail there at seven and eight. So um, as it stands right now, there's a couple opportunities for these teams on the outside looking in that, that, that are can punch a ticket into the dance. Right. And uh, it's going to be a fun last couple of weeks of football. So uh, some key matchups for week 17, looking at both AFC and NFC here. Detroit is going to Dallas. Detroit's got a chance at the one seed if, uh, if uh, the Niners drop one off. Um, obviously a big matchup this weekend against Dallas, who's uh, sitting in the five seed in the, in the NFC as of right now. And then uh, Vegas travels to Indianapolis. Indianapolis, the team who is in the playoff picture right now. Um, and Vegas is trying to get their ticket punch. You know, after a strong show out against the Chiefs, they have an opportunity here to maybe get a six or a seventh seed. Mm -hmm. And uh, last couple of games here, um, specific to the AFC, Miami travels to Baltimore. Obviously, we're Baltimore fans this weekend with a Miami loss. It puts us one step closer to that two seed. And then the last one I got is Cincinnati at Kansas City. It's a big one. Cincinnati's trying to get in the dance. Kansas City's trying to wrap up the AFC West and solidify themselves in the playoff picture for the year. So I, those are my four big games for this uh, week 17. A lot of moving pieces. And it's going to be, like I said, man, exciting week this week. And moving into the last two weeks of the season, holy shit, I didn't think I was going to be saying that, man. That's crazy. This, this season has flown by, man. It flown has by. been a roller coaster that, uh, you know, I'm kind of ready for – I'm ready to get off it a little bit. <laughs> it's been <laughs> wild. It's been Maybe wild. I want to throw up. I think, yeah, definitely making me nauseous. I think the, the <laughs> biggest thing here with the playoff picture is the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Texans having the same record. Like, yep. whoever wins that division goes to the playoffs. Whoever bounces out of that frame likely doesn't get in with the way things are sitting right now in the remaining games. Cleveland has a – 
nice lead over New York. They're going to win their 11th game. Didn't see that coming. Most likely if, if things keep yeah. going, they're going for them in this Thursday night football game. A lot, uh, a lot that can still shake out in terms of seating, but you know, for these guys that are outside looking in, I'm not too worried about any of them getting in. Like, Cincinnati, don't see that happening. Vegas, probably not. Pittsburgh, maybe. Houston, maybe. Indy, I don't, I'm not big on them as far as like viability yeah. in the playoffs just because they got, you know, a backup quarterback. No disrespect to Gardner Minshew or anything, but, you know, really the, the game that I'm looking at is where's Buffalo going to land? Right. That'll dictate when or if we see them at any point in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. And where are you, where are we in my Kansas City and Miami going to end up finishing two yeah. seed or three seed? If Buffalo ends up as a seven seed, they're going straight to Baltimore. Right. But if they end up as a six seed. They're coming and playing us, most likely, if we end up getting out of the wild card round. So or no, if they play as if they end up as six, seed, we do play them in the wild card. So like. Those yeah, are all things that are going to have some heavy impact. Cleveland has got a death grip on that five seed with a win. Yeah. So oh, yeah. they're going they're going straight to Miami. So like those are all if at, if the two seed maintains. So those are all things gotcha. that you know are gonna are we're gonna have to see them shake out. Yeah, it's gonna be exciting here, and and honestly, I really don't want to see Buffalo Week One. I think that's a bad matchup for Kansas City. But you know, or in the in the wild card matchup. But if that's how it shakes out, it's how it shakes out. You know, you got to beat teams to get to the Super Bowl, and and uh, yeah, uh, got to play good teams sometimes on the yeah. way to the Super Bowl. <laughs> it's the way it goes. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the value right now for the two seed. You know, if Miami drops their their next two games, and we can we can squeak one in there and and win our next two and squeak into the two seed. There's value in in playing the seven seed there, and, you know whether it's Indianapolis, whether it's H or uh, uh, Houston, yeah, or Jacksonville Falls. I like that matchup. Or if Cincy mm -hmm. makes it in, I like that matchup again. Or Pittsburgh, I, I like all those matchups. I like those, uh, you know, definitely compared to a, a Buffalo uh, again. I don't, I don't want to see that again. I, I'm okay, or maybe a divisional or AFC Championship because I don't, I don't. I think at this point they're gonna they're ready to fracture under pressure, but uh, wild card there's no pressure, you know. So, um, yeah, a lot of going on, but um, it's gonna be fun to watch, that's for sure. Dan, I want to wrap the show up with one question here, and it's been something that's been asked all season, you know, with Chiefs Kingdom is, is it time to panic? You know, as we sit right now, Chiefs are nine and six. We've played really shitty football the last six weeks. You could say seven, really, and. Um, we're still likely to win the West. We're still nine and six. Like I said, it's a winning record for you as a Chiefs fan. Is it time to panic? Or we well, I, think that? It's, I think it's about the the framing of the question too, right? Like, is it time to panic this year? Like, I've already sure, been yeah. a little panicked with a three and five record over the last eight games. No improvement on the mis on the little mistakes that we made throughout that eight game stretch where we've lost to. The likes of Jordan Love, Aiden O'Connell. I mean, just name the bad quarterback. Russell Wilson is not impressive to me. We lost a game to those Denver Broncos. I mean, those that's panic-worthy stuff for this season. That's panic-worthy stuff going into the playoffs. Like, it's clearly a champagne problem thing where we've had five glorious years of football and we're holding this team yeah. to this godly, you know, yeah. <laughs> bar. Yeah these expectations that are just asinine for any other team to, to have. And we're still in a, in a, what I would call a very much a down year. We're still going to win the division. We're still going to make the playoffs. We're still going to host a game in Arrowhead. Like those are all things that you ha you can take solace in, but in terms of do I think if you're talking Super Bowl hopes, I'm a little panicked about us getting there for sure. Panicked, for the future, not really. Like these are all problems that I think we can sort out in March and April with the draft and with free agency and with getting new personnel in, with making some new hires in certain situations, not calling for anyone's job, but Matt Nagy, I don't know if he's the guy, our wide receivers coach, really not coaching anybody up from a discipline yeah. perspective. 
No one's being held accountable for those actions to make those corrections into the next week, into the following weeks after they make those mistakes. So, I mean, panic for the future, not at all. I mean, I think it's still very bright with who we have under center, who we have as a head coach, what our defense looks like today. There's going to be some decisions made in the offseason, but the foundational yeah. pieces are there, right? We have some yeah, defensive yeah. studs on all three levels. We have a great offensive line that's under contract for the next couple of years, especially the interior. We have some solid skill position players. It's just adding some more elements to that and getting back to where I think we could be and where we've been already. So, you know, panic for this year, a little bit, a little bit panic yeah. for the playoffs, a little low expectations. Yeah, yeah. No, I think you said it very well. And the only thing I'm going to add on to that is is where the panic or concern may come from for the long term is where this team is going to change, right? Where, where Travis Kelsey wasn't going to be 30 years old every year, you know? Like, he's going to have to retire at some point. Are we going to sign Chris Jones next year? Are we going to sign Drew Tranquil? Are we going to sign Jerry Sneed? These are guys that I think Chiefs Kingdom is worried about losing or worried about replacing, right? And where we should have had the same concern with the receiving core for the last two years, right? And we picked up Juju right. and he made a he had a, a solid season for us, nine hundred some yards on the season, you know, whatever maybe. And he he kind of got us through. Obviously, got us through. Won us a freaking Super Bowl, but. Uh, I think that's a concern from Chiefs Kingdom. And honest, quite honestly, that's my concern is, is we've had old faithful Travis Kelsey for so long, but it feels like he's about to hang up the cleats. And that kind of scares me. And I'm prepared to lose Chris Jones. That, that's nothing off my back. I, I, don't, I don't think that – I don't think you pay him. But we can talk about that in the offseason. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I, think about, I, I think about some of those other guys that I'm like, man, you know, I'd love to see Jerry Sneed or – I think that's only my my concern or my panic is that what the future looks like without some of those guys. And I, I think yeah. Kansas City and I think Chiefs Kingdom kind of has the same feeling, that, you know, what's next. So but you're right. We do have a foundation. We just got to keep building off that. So, yeah, I, I appreciate the answer there. That's always been a kind of a we've always kind of brushed that one off all season because it's like, hey, Next week we could drop forty two on you, and you we'd look like twenty nineteen Chiefs, right? So right. I think things have just morphed a little bit this season, and not quite to our expectations. But you know what? The Patriots had some really shitty years in between their Super Bowls as well. So we to for Chiefs fans to expect Super Bowl to go to the Super Bowl every other year wasn't realistic, man. And the season's not over. We could f- freaking go to the Super Bowl this year. You know, it, crazy shit happens. So um, yeah. yeah. You just get a know, ticket to the dance. That. There's no telling. Yep, yep. You just got a groove, baby. Just got a groove. Well, let's get. Let's start by getting this dub over the Bengals this weekend, locking yep. up the division title. The I think eighth consecutive that puts us in a lead all time for the division. So, yeah, a lot of history to be made there. Trey, hope you had a, a good Christmas. Hope you have a happy New Year, man. And um, yep, let's go get them. Let's get them, Bob. Go Chiefs. Go Chiefs. <laughs>